Good morning, everybody, and welcome to JAM 2021. I am so happy to have you join us this morning, and uh, I, I hope you enjoyed our uh, quick opening video. Uh, I hope that gives you a, a little bit of pump to uh, start your day. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Mike Winsman, and I'm the Director of Transfer and Technology at BC Cat, and I'm going to be your host uh, over the course of the next two days. So you're going to be seeing a lot of me, uh, both during and before and uh, after the various sessions today. Um, so hopefully um, uh, you get used to me. Um, just starting off, uh, BC Cat wants to acknowledge that our offices are situated on the unceded territory of the Coast Salish people, including the territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil tooth nations. And we are committed to building respectful relationships with First Peoples, and we thank them for their hospitality. It has been uh, quite a year. You're probably aware that we have been going through a pandemic, and uh, as a result, we have spent most of the past year working in front of our computers. The uh, picture that you see behind me is actually a picture of BC Cat's offices, which I have visited about 10 times in the last 18 months. So I keep that picture up to remind me of what the old normal used to look like, uh, because it helps keep me grounded uh, as we've worked our way through these uh, interesting uh, times. You can also see I'm wearing a tie today. This represents the third time in 18 months that I've worn a tie to a meeting, but don't worry, I am still wearing my sweatpants. The pandemic has taken a lot from our everyday lives, but it's not gonna take away my comfy clothes. We have been doing some version of this meeting since the early 2000s, and we officially branded this meeting as the Joint Annual Meeting in 2010 because it brings together members of the articulation community with the everyday practitioners of transfer credit uh, in this uh, province. Now, this morning has uh, normally been, this meeting has normally been an in-person event. Um, however, obviously due to the unforeseen circumstances of the past year, um, this gave us an opportunity last year to do the first ever online version of this event. And uh, I'm gonna be honest with you, last year, you guys blew us away. Um, we were just blown away by the level of engagement by people who were posting in the chat, who were posting on the discussion boards, who were uh, sharing their stories. Uh, and it was really a, a wonderful experience, I think, for certainly for BC Cat staff and myself. But I think based on the feedback we received from uh, our attendees, uh, it was a, a very well run event uh, for everyone that attended. I was taking a look um, through the attendee list uh, earlier this morning. And uh, I can see that we have a great blend of both experienced jammers along with uh, first time events, uh, first time attendees. Uh, and so I'm really glad uh, to see that. I see the chat is uh, very active right now. If you are a first time jammer or a long time jam attendee, feel free to introduce yourself uh, into uh, the uh, chat. Um, I see some people are making comment about the sound. Just a reminder, if you mouse over the screen, there is a volume control option in the lower right-hand corner. Uh, so if you are not hearing the sound, um, please hit the uh, volume control on the lower right-hand side and uh, that should uh, fix you up. Last year, we had uh, a little over 350 people register for the event. And uh, this year we have uh, very close to 400, just shy of 400 people registered. Uh, and, um, you know, one thing that we really took away from last year was that even though we've all been uh, meeting through Zoom or Teams or uh, various other online formats, and we all are feeling the uh, Zoom fatigue, um, what we did learn last year was that um, online can still be engaging. And dare I say it, it can also be a little bit fun if you're willing to have some fun with it. The loose theme of this year's event is the new normal. And many of the sessions will reflect the work that is being done, not only by BCCAT, but by members of the articulation community that reflect the new norms of business as a result uh, of the pandemic. I feel sometimes that as we slowly make our way back to face-to-face -face and resume regular activities, it's a, it's a bit like we're in a, an episode of The Twilight Zone, you know, where you come back and things appear to be sort of the same, but deep down, you know, something is different. Um, many of the activities we have scheduled for the next two days will provide you with an opportunity to tell us about your new normal, uh, and I'd encourage you to gauge in, in, engage in whatever way uh, you feel comfortable. So to that end, um, I'd like to give you a bit of a rundown of how this opening session is going to run. Uh, in a minute, I'm going to pass the virtual microphone to Jim Hamilton, BC Cats Council Co-Chair, who's going to offer a welcome and some opening remarks. Uh, and from there, we are going to have uh, a recorded territorial welcome from Elder Tom Oldman. Uh, 
Uh, and we'll also have a welcome from the Minister of Advanced Education and Skills Training, the Honorable Ann Kang. Uh, after that, I'm going to provide a quick overview of how to get the most out of this conference platform with a few tips on, uh, on, on things that you can do to help uh, increase your levels of engagement. And then from there, uh, shortly around 9.30, uh, we will go into our first keynote uh, session, which is from Dr. Sarah Eaton of the University of Calgary, who is going to provide us an overview on the state of contract cheating in Canada. Sound good? Hopefully that sounds good to you. All right, to that end, I am now going to pass the microphone over to uh, Jim Hamilton. Jim Hamilton is a, a longtime friend of council. Uh, he is currently our council co-chair. Formerly, uh, before, uh, actually during his time, he has just recently retired as uh, the former Okanagan, uh, president of Okanagan College, where he served as president from 2004 to 2020, 2021. And he's been maintaining his connection to higher education, both through, through BCCAT as co-chair, and he also serves as a member of the Thompson Rivers University Board. So to that end, I'm going to pass it over to you, Jim. Thanks, Mike. Um, great job. I was telling Mike earlier that I thought he looked like an anchor on BCTV, and he said not to say that because it would jinx him. So uh, good start, Mike, to the morning for everybody. Uh, I would like to start by acknowledging that I'm speaking today from the traditional unceded territory of the Silik Sulkanagan people. And specifically, I want to offer my respects and my gratitude to the Okanagan Indian Band on whose territory it is my privilege to reside. On behalf of my co-chair, Rob Fleming, and on all the members of council, I'd like to welcome you to the 11th Annual JAM. Uh, JAM is a pretty special event, I think, because it provides the stewards of BC's most post-secondary transfer system an opportunity to meet to learn about the most recent innovations, to celebrate our achievements, and to discuss some of the challenges and opportunities that we face. It's also a welcome chance to informally network with each other and for BCCAT to thank those of you online and the hundreds, if not thousands, of others in institutions across the province for all of your dedication and hard work. You make BCCAT and the transfer system work for students. And for that, we're grateful. My thanks also to my co-chair Rob Fleming and all the staff of BC Cat for organizing what promises to be a great jam and for continuing the work of the council throughout the last year. They and all of you have not relented in pursuing our shared goal of helping students to move seamlessly between post-secondary institutions, guided always by a dual commitment to access and quality. Now, as a parent, I have seen the value of BC Cat's work firsthand because two of my children transferred painlessly from Okanagan University College to UBC and UVic. And as a president, I was well aware of the great work being done in institutions and at BC Cat to sustain and improve the transfer system. Now, presidents don't often have a chance to personally assist in transfers. In fact, they should really not interfere in such matters, leaving it up to those who actually know how it works, people like those of you online. But I want to share a story of how I kind of broke that rule two weeks ago, but in a good way, I think. And besides, I'm no longer president, so I don't have to abide by that old rule, I guess. Anyway, a week or so ago, I was having tea with a friend and that friend told me that she wanted advice on a post-secondary matter. That's often leading to an awkward discussion as people want you to intercede on various matters for people that you shouldn't really be involved in. But what she wanted to talk about was this. She has a relative who over the years has already completed several courses at a university and at a college in BC, some by distance and some in person. Now that person plans to enter at yet another BC post-secondary institution and, is, and she is wondering what kind of credit she could get for courses she had already completed. So Mike would be proud of me, I hope. I popped open my laptop, I called up the BC transfer guide, I showed her how easy it is to work with and then suggested the student do a bit of homework and then contact the relevant education advisor at the school she wished to enter. So that's just a simple story. Um, that illustrates for me and reminds me of the need for, as well as the complexity and advantage of the BC transfer system. And that system has been built, sustained and improved for decades now by people like many of you, many of us who are online today. So I say, 
thank you to all of you. And I wish everybody a successful and enjoyable jam. And Mike, it's back to you. All right. Thank you, Jim. I'm always proud of the work that you do for us and really appreciate your opening comments. Uh, that was great. Um, now I'd like to uh, turn it over to um, Tom Ullman, who is an elder at MVIT. He is a member of the Statlium, Lakapam, and Chilcolton Nations. Tom was gracious enough to record this video welcome for us, and I want to extend my gratitude and thanks to Elder Tom for the following remarks. In squatches are allowed in scope, in squatches evening owl, platinum of the cat mouth, chillicote and upper mill chona. My English name is Tom Ullman, and I'm pleased to come here and do a little bit of work for, for NVIT, as an Indigenous language program. We are happy to sit in the lands of Silver Tooth, Squamish, Musqueam the Okanagan and the Chakamuk people, the NBIT. All of these people have nothing but good things to offer to Indigenous people from all over the Americas. So I say Kukstam, Kukstam, and thank you to the people around NBIT Burnaby who allow me to come here and do work. Thank you to the elders in merit who do understand that, that I'm here doing this kind of stuff. And I, I say that because I'm, um, I'm one of the people that did not learn our language. The term that was used at the time when I was six years old was so what that says is that this one will not speak a language. He has no ears to listen. He's not smart enough to learn. And he will be just like the white people. That is some of the elders in our territory who thought we would no longer be around past 1950. So understanding what was said at the time, I, taught, I turned off my ears for our language. And I still don't know very much of it. I speak baby talk. My prayers are simple. And it took me a while to learn. So I, I really appreciate the move to move towards a, a full language pro, pro, program particularly with the ones on the West Coast. The Aboriginal Mother Language Project, not the Aboriginal, but the Mother Language Project has identified 28 languages that will disappear in the next 25 years as the elders die. So it's good work that you're doing. And I put my hands up to you to say, Kokshtem, I recognize the people from this land and sing Dan George's song that's given to our people for, for an anthem for all of us on Turtle Island. Oh, hello. Oh, hey. 
And I only sang two verses out of four. The last two will be sung sometime in the future. And I thank you for listening. And I really have to let, let John and Vernon know how grateful I am. And just ask you to try to go back as far as you can in the language project. The things they are teaching our people now are kind of like the new Tlatima, the new, the new Shakatma, the new Anishinaabe. We have to know who we were and where we came from to be whole. And people like myself are just entering that part of the world. I will be doing some recordings up in my territory of three elders that speak our language fluently hoping I can save some of the old time language. Yeah. So it's good. I say cook them, cook them. Good. All right. Thank you for inviting me, Verna and John. Pachka, Pachka, Tim. Thank you, Tom. Um, those were amazing words, and I really appreciate you taking the time to give us that wonderful welcome uh, this morning. All the best to you for the rest of your day. Um, at this point, I'd like to now turn it over to the Honorable Ann Kang, Minister, Minister of Advanced Education, Skills and Training, uh, who also has recorded a welcome for us. She had wanted to be here in person, uh, but unfortunately, her schedule didn't permit it, but she was able to send this welcome video in advance, which is much appreciated. And so now I'm going to please uh, ask you to welcome the Honourable uh, Minister Anne Kang. Hello, everyone. My name is Anne Kang, BC's Minister of Advanced Education and Skills Training. I'm sending you greetings from the traditional territory of the Lekwungen speaking peoples, the Songhees and Esquimalt First Nations. Since 1989, BC CAT has been instrumental to student success. BC has the most comprehensive credit transfer network in Canada, and we are able to continue to lead this work with a strong collaboration with BC's public post-secondary institutions. Our world-class transfer system enables students to move seamlessly between institutions. Because of the important work you do, the BC Transfer Guide was recently expanded to include transfer equivalencies beyond BC. As of 2021, BC added 61,000 international and out-of-province equivalencies, and this is so vital. Now students can add flexible learning pathways for their unique educational journeys. We know that BC's post-secondary students are highly mobile. Students transfer for many reasons, such as financial challenges, living in remote locations, and life events like job losses, house moves, and starting families. One thing is clear. Because of your work, BC students can achieve their educational goals and pursue the careers they need to thrive and succeed. I want to recognize the leadership that BC CAT provides across the system, the role you play to create more seamless access to post-secondary education programs and pathways throughout the province. Thank you for your work to empower BC students and help build the best BC for students. All right, thank you for that, um, Minister. That was uh, wonderful and we really appreciate you taking the time to record uh, those greetings for us. Okay, now that we have the welcomes out of the way, uh, I wanted to provide just a quick overview uh, for you of how to get the most out of this platform. Some of you may have used this platform before, um, particularly if you came to JAM last year, uh, but in, just in case you haven't, or this is your first time here, um, I wanted to give you a little bit of instructions to uh, show you how to get the most out of this sessions. Uh, and also how to engage 
uh, with uh, the audience. So uh, first of all, if you're seeing the screen that you're seeing on my presentation right now, uh, congratulations, you passed the first test, you have logged in successfully through uh, the web app. Um, there are a variety of ways that you can connect to JAM over the course of the next couple of days. Uh, this is a picture of the web view. Um, however, um, there are different ways that you can connect. So if you want to connect through the mobile app, you can download the mobile app and log in um, using, using either your phone uh, or your tablet. Um, if you do use the web app, and we do recommend that you use the web app, we do recommend that you use Chrome or Firefox. Uh, that seems to provide the, uh, the best experience. Um, and there's also instructions for how to uh, download the app uh, on the Whova website. You probably also received a few emails uh, over the course of the last week to uh, provide information uh, on that. In terms of the agenda, um, the way it's going to work for the next two days is it's going to be a mixture of live and pre-recorded. Uh, we did this last year and it worked out quite well. Now you might be saying, well, why do you pre-record sessions? Well, the reason you pre-record sessions is to avoid technical difficulties. Uh, I'll let you in on a little bit of a, a, a secret. When uh, Jim Hamilton, our co-chair, joined us this morning uh, on Zoom at around 8.45, uh, he could, um, he, we could hear him and we could see him, but he couldn't hear us. And so we had a little bit of a flurry just to try to uh, resolve those technical difficulties, which we did. Um, we have decided to pre-record the sessions this year, and we've tried to keep them around 20 to 30 minutes. I fully recognize that being at an online conference all day and watching videos all day uh, can be tiring. And so as a result, we've tried to keep the sessions brief. Uh, however, every session will end with a live question and answer. So all the uh, pre presenters are standing by. And they will be available to answer any questions or respond to uh, any feedback that is provided in the chat. So please, if you have questions about anything that you see presented, put it into the chat, put it in the question and answer, uh, and uh, we will then be switching to a live component at the end of each session. You can leave a stream at any time and uh, come back. Uh, and I wanted to let you know that all the videos for all the sessions will be available uh, at the end of the day when we upload them to our YouTube channel. If you want to find out a little bit more about the various attendees who are here, you can navigate the menu that is uh, on the right side, or sorry, the left side of your screen. Uh, if you go to attendees, you can find information about the different profiles and where people are from. Um, we have nearly 400 delegates here today. Uh, so uh, if you want to send a message or arrange for a virtual meetup, um, you can find information about that on the attendees section. The community board. This is where you get a chance to uh, tell us a little bit about what's going on with you. Um, this is an opportunity to participate in discussion moments, to share your moments. Uh, we also have put in uh, various articles as well as the job openings, including a very special job opening that is available at BC Cat. You might want to take a look at the opportunity uh, because we are looking to hire a uh, new director of research and admissions, and you can find out more about that in the job openings. I saw yesterday that there are uh, a number of postings there for upcoming conferences. Uh, so if you know of some upcoming conferences that you feel might be of interest to this uh, audience, please go ahead and post the details uh, on one of the discussion boards. This is also a chance to uh, ask our, or our organizers any questions if you're having any uh, uh, challenges or if you just have a question in general, um, there's an opportunity to do that in the community uh, section. Now, last year we did a photo contest and it was very open-ended and it quickly turned into a photo contest of uh, everybody's uh, favorite pet as well as uh, pictures of everybody's children and it was wonderful. I uh, really enjoyed going through all the photos that uh, were submitted last year and so we have decided again to uh, run a photo contest. We're calling it the Moving Forward Photo Contest. We are looking for you to upload pictures that uh, for you, describe what has changed or what is the new normal for you as we move forward uh, in the pandemic, uh, through the pandemic. There will be three lucky winners who will receive a prize pack. You can see a preview of some of the items that you uh, will receive, including a, uh, a copy of Sarah Eaton's book on plagiarism uh, in higher education. Uh, and we not only want you to upload photos, but you can also vote for your favorites. And I, I think you could probably vote for yourself too, but we uh, don't wanna have any allegations of rigged elections. So please be sparing uh, in your votes. Um, but yeah, please take a look at the photo contest uh, because we love to see uh, those little pieces and slices of, uh, of your life. Finally, if you take a look at the resources section, uh, which is located on the lower half of your left-hand menu, um, that's where you can have access to the session question and answers. 
The video gallery is where we are going to put the sessions from today uh, into uh, Whova. They will be available uh, after the uh, completion of the first day. We've also created a uh, new section called BCCAT Vids. This includes videos from last year or other videos that we have put together that may be of interest. You can take a look at those, uh, as well as the report section, which includes um, recently uh, published publications from BCCAT that highlights some of the work. If you are on social media, we'd encourage you to uh, tweet about JAM using the hashtag JAM2021, uh, and we'll be monitoring uh, the uh, Twitter activity throughout the course of the next couple of days. All right, so here are some tips for you uh, as you work your way through it. Now, I know that some people are very comfortable working in uh, this environment, and other people are not so comfortable, and that is okay. Um, we encourage you to engage in the level that you feel comfortable. So the more you engage, the more we can engage, but don't feel obligated. Um, we want you to feel comfortable and we want you to feel informed and enjoy the events. You can watch the sessions live as they happen, or you can watch them after the event. Um, we do obviously encourage people to be respectful uh, of each other. If you uh, have any questions, we are here to help. Uh, all BCCAT staff are standing by, um, and you can email us at jam at bccat. Uh, .ca. By the way, one more note about the photo contest. Uh, we will be cutting off the photo contest tomorrow at 1 p.m. So November 4th at 1 p.m. is the deadline to submit your photos. And then uh, the winners will be uh, selected uh, after that. So if you want to uh, participate in the contest, please make sure you put your photos up by 1 p.m. tomorrow. And that's it for opening instructions. I just wanna thank you for being part of JAM 2021. We are exactly on time. We are at 9.30. And so to that end, I'm actually now gonna go right into introducing our first keynote session.